So good morning guys. Today we are going to explain about cantilever retaining wall problem. How to design the cantilever retaining wall. That last uh, tutorial we discussed about how to design a cantilever retaining wall step by step process. In the same process today we will solve the problem. So first see the problem. Design a cantilever retaining wall to retain an at the embankment 4 meter height above the ground level. So the density of the earth is 18 kN per meter cube. Its angle of repose is 30 degrees. That means they given the earth embankment level, height level, 4 meters above the ground level and density of the earth soil is 18 and angle of repose is 30 degrees. Next, the embankment is horizontal at the top and the safe bearing capacity of soil is 200 kN per meter square. And the coefficient of the friction between the soil and the concrete is 0 0.5. So, now FCK value M20 and FI value 415 HYST bus. This is the given data what they given. So, please when you are solving the problem, please keep in front of you the step by step procedure of the retaining wall designing process. So, what is the step 1? As you can see in the step by step procedure, first one is the given data. First, we need the height of the embankment above the ground level in the meters. So, as you can see in the question, they already given this is a cantilever retaining wall to retain an earth embankment 4 meter height above the ground level. That means height of the embankment above the ground level is 4 meters. And the second one is density of soil 18 and the angle of repose pi value 30 degrees and safe bearing capacity of soil is 200 kN per meter square and coefficient of the friction is 0 0.5 and FCK concrete M20 and FI is 415. So we will go for the next step. Dimensions of the retaining wall. As you can there see there first one is the minimum depth of the foundation. This formula you are already familiar with this one. So D is equal to rho nothing but safe bearing capacity of soil divided by density of the soil into 1 minus sin pi by 1 plus sin pi whole square. So then when you are substituting the values 200 by 18 and pi value is 30 degrees. So by calculating we will get the depth of the foundation is 1.2 meters. So please keep calci with you when you are solving the problem also and do it the properly. Calculations you have to verify it once. So next one is overall depth of wall. So h is equal to height of the embankment plus depth of the foundation. So nothing but this height of embankment plus depth of the foundation means when you see this diagram this one is the height of the embankment and this one is the depth of the foundation that you already find out that one. This is in given data height of the embankment is 4 meters and depth of the foundation d value you find there depending on the formula. So 1.2 meters you have to add this 4 meters plus 1.2 meters how much you will get it 5.2 meters. Next one is the thickness of the base lap. Tb is equal to h by 12. h is nothing but overall depth of the wall by 12. So 5.2 meters nothing but when you convert this one into mm. So 5200 divided by 12. Nothing but you will get the 433 mm. Then when you take in overall round up cover 450 mm you will take this one. So this one is the thickness of the base lab. When you see with the retaining wall this one is the thickness of the base lab. So height of embankment is over depth of the foundation and thickness of the base lab. So next one is the height of the stem hs value that is equal to h minus tv overall depth of the wall minus thickness of the base lab that means 5 minus 5.2 minus 0 0.45 this 450 mm you convert it into meter then you will get the 4.75 mm sorry meters. So this one is 4.75 meter completely this height of the stem height here. So next one is Coefficient of the active earth pressure as per the rank in CA. CA is equal to 1 minus sin pi by 1 plus sin pi. So pi value is equal to nothing but 30 degrees. When you substitute that you will get the 0 0.33. So next one is width of the heel slab. Nothing but XH or TH. In the previous step by step process also don't get the confused. Both we mentioned the same term. XH is equal to TH only. That is equal to H into square root of CA by 3. H means overall depth of the wall into CA coefficient of the active earth pressure divided by 3. You will get around 1.73 T. You can take 2 meters also no problem. Next one is width of the base lab that means completely width of the base lab. 
capital B is equal to 1.5 times of the XH. When you calculate it there, if you take in 1.732 or 2 also, you will get the 2.598 or 3 meters. So for taking the round figure that we are assuming the 3 meters. So base lab means it has to be have some more width. That's why we are taking 3 meters only. So complete the width of the base slab is 3 meters. And width of the toy slab, nothing but XT here. This one. This width you have to assume minimum value as a 1 meter only. And add up the thickness here 200 mm. So this one TB almost here from the stem downside. This thickness it has to be less than this thickness. So this thickness is almost equal to the thickness of the base slab. So when you are drawing clearly see this diagram. So this is the height of the embankment as the 4 meters and depth of the foundation is 1.2 meters and height of the stem is 4.75 and completely height of the over retaining wall is 5.2 meters and thickness of the base slab is 0.45 meters and here thickness sorry width of the toy slab this one is toy part toy slab is 1 meters and this one is the 0.45 meters completely width the slab 3 meters so when you take in this 3 meter minusing of this 1 meters and 0.45 meters you will get the 1.55 meters so this one is the width of the heel slab from here to here this one is heel slab here and thickness above the stem top part this one is 200 mm we are adapted that we are assuming that one so this is the completely dimensions of the retaining wall so this one w1 is acting on the back fill side w2 acting on the stem part w3 is acting on the base slab here so this one is pa active air pressure due to the back fill soil pressure it is getting on horizontally this side so that one is the active at pressure ca into gamma a into h square by 2 this is the formula depending on the rank in series clear so after that one depending on the soil at pressure pa and w1 w2 and w3 sulfate the pressure wall diagram upward pressure diagram will we will draw like this so from a at this point b at this point c at this point d at this point so the maximum pressure when you apply some load from this side it will get the compression towards the this side only so here due to compression the pressure will be the maximum on this point only and here it will be minimum so these values you have to find out depending on the complete weight and momentum of the forces here so next step is design of stem when you see the first one is moment of the stem so 1.5 into ca into gamma into h square by 6 so you substitute the values you will get the moment in kN per meter so ca value we already find out there gamma e value is there hs value also there so there is no need to find another new thing here so when you take in depth of the foundation you can see here this one sorry depth of the slab 450 mm nothing but thickness of the base slab 450 mm but here when you are providing reinforcement somewhat here you have to provide the clear cover also so by removing that cover 50 mm what you have to get 400 mm this is the normal effective depth of the heel slab this one is the overall depth of the heel slab so when you see here mu by b square mu means here moment how much you get there and b means per meter how much you are getting there so 10 cube into effective depth of the slab so 400 square so as per the table 2 sp16 percentage of the reinforcement you will get there depending on this value and you will get the pt is equal to 0 0.30 so pt is equal to 100 ast by bd is equal to 30 0.30 so ast we have to find out for the stem part only and b value we know d value we know and pt value also as per the table we will get to know so AST is equal to 0 0.30 into B into D. So B is 10 Q and D is 400 divided by 100. You will get the 1200 mm square per meter because we calculated per meter only. Clear. So depending on this reinforcement, you have to provide the completely same part from here to here reinforcement. But when you see in the pressure here, when you are acting on the earth pressure, here 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 and these three parts variation will be there top middle and the bottom so depending on that one we can save the reinforcement 
So providing main reinforcement 16 mm diameter as per the 1200 you can take 12 mm also no problem but spacing has to be increased. So 16 mm diameter at the 150 mm from here so cross to cross section bottom and 200 mm at middle and 300 mm spacing at the top because it is getting less pressure here clear. So in previous video we discussed only about the main reinforcement now this one is a distribution reinforcement normally distribution reinforcement so 0.12% of the cross sectional area we will provide this cross section area means nothing but width into thickness of the slab so width per meter when you are taking here and thickness of the slab 450 mm so 0.12 by 100 into 1000 into 450 so AST, small AST distribution reinforcement you are getting the 540 mm square per minute. When you compare it to main reinforcement this one is very small. So you are providing the minimum reinforcement 8 mm diameter. So as you can see there providing 8 mm diameter at 150 mm center to center spacing in horizontal direction because that main reinforcement will in be vertical direction. Clear. So next step is stability computation for pressure distribution at the base point. So first one is loads you have to calculate and magnitude of the load and distance from A and moment in kilonewton per meter. So when you see the step by step procedure what is the loads will come here that I already explained but still we will repeat it again. See when you see the stem part mainly so this one here here acting W1 so on the back wheel side and W2 is acting on stem part and W3 is acting on the slab part. So depending on that one so W1 sulfate of the backfill so xh into hs into gamma so that is gamma is the density of the soil at pressure nothing but 18 and hs is the height of the stem from here to here height of the stem so and the next one is xh nothing but heel slab width here so this xh value is nothing but the width of the heel slab as you can see in the diagram this is the width of the heel slab 1.55 into hs nothing but height of the stem this one is the height of the stem completely 4.75 meters so 1.55 into 4.75 into 18 by using the calculator it is must and sure that you have to find out that value it will be almost 132.52 and distance from a to this force that means from A point to W1 at which point it is acting. So it is acting at the middle of the heel slab. So 1.55 by 2. So when you take in 1.55 by 2 you will get the 0 0.775. So moment is nothing but load into the distance. So 132.52 into 0 0.775. You will get the 102.703. In the same way you will find this all the forces magnitude of the load and distance from here. When you cross multiply these all the things you will get the moment clear yeah. so these are all the w force self it is coming towards the retaining wall downwards so all the forces are positive so this one this completely value you have to take it as a sigma m and this one is the sigma w force and moment due to at pressure also coming on the other side that one is m is equal to ca into nothing but m is equal to pa into hs by 3 so PA value is nothing but CA into gamma A into HS square by 2 value. So by multiplying this one you will get this moment. This all the values you have in the dimensions step only. Here. But here one more thing also there. Gamma concrete. Nothing but density of the concrete. That you already know that one is 25. So after finding this moment and force. Shear force nothing but there almost. So distance of the point of application of resultant from point A. So it's a point of application of resultant like when you are finding the engineering mechanics here. So Z is equal to moment by the weight where it is acting. So 323.91 divided by 203.37. You are getting 1.592. Almost when you make round up there 1.6 meters you will get. So after finding this Z value you have to find out the eccentricity. So E is equal to Z minus 0 0.5 into width of the complete slab. So width of the slab is 3 meters. You will get the 0 0.1 meters. If it is less than B by 6, then the eccentricity, the loads and the moment is bearable. Otherwise, if it is getting more, then you have to increase the dimensions on the second step. Clear. 
So next one is soil pressure is compressed from A to D. So there you have to find out the minimum and maximum soil pressures. As you can see here, P maximum and P minimum you have to find out. For this one, formula is W by B into 1 plus or minus 6 E by B. So this one, W is nothing but total weight divided by B value, nothing but 3, eccentricity 0 0.1. So by this one, plus or minus is here. By adding and making subtraction, you will get the maximum value by addition and you will get the minimum value by subtraction. So this one is the 81.3516 and this one is 54.2344. If you want, you can write it here also on this diagram. P maximum, P minimum values. Clear. So depending on these two values maximum, you will find the pressure diagrams at this point. See, at the from G, H, I. From this point, how much you are getting? From C, F, how much you are getting? From J, F, E, how much you are getting? This one you have to find out. Clear. So this one is P average at the J, E, F. Nothing but from this point to this point. As you can see in clearly in the diagram. From G point, J, E, F. From this point, P maximum below this one. And at the C, F one point and G, H, I one point. So for this one, the formulas are here. So before finding the JEF, you have to find out the IG and now you have to find out the CF. So at the IG point, P maximum minus P minimum by 2. Here, at this point. So this one is P maximum minus P minimum by 2 at the middle point. You will get the 13.56 by calculating. And P average at the CF. It's P maximum plus P minimum by 2 plus P average at the IG by third is force that means this force 1 by third so by calculating this one you will get the 72.31 so for at the JEF P maximum force minus P average at the CF force you have to minus so 9.04 by finding this all the forces only you will get the heel slab toe slab design properly so next one is design of heel slab so when you see here so next one is design of the heel slab so maximum bending moment in the heel slab at the bb section so here at the heel slab point this one is the heel slab as you can see there w3 is acting there on the slab part and the soil upward at pressure a b i h a b i h and g h i is acting so you have to include these two forces also a b i h and g h i and the downwards it is acting self weight of the heel slab and W1. W1 is nothing but weight of the backfill here. W1 is acting, W3 is acting downwards and this upward at pressure. That's nothing but this force is acting on upwards like this. Here. So these are the two forces upwards and these are the two forces downwards. So this force is taking as a pass two and this one is taking as a negative. So let's see. So W1 is nothing but we already find out in the previous step also. There you will find the same procedure. And self weight of the heel slab also. Normal same procedure. So these both are the positive forces. What about the upward pressure ABIH towards the up force? So this one is ABIH point. So P minimum ABIH into XH. Nothing but the width of the heel slab. So P minimum value ABH. I mean nothing but highest near so you can see this value 54.23 nothing but p minimum value so completely here at the edge band and into this width of the seal force is coming here into the distance so this one is the 84.05 attacking the middle of the force so force into moment almost distance is equal to you will get the moment Next one, the same thing like that, GHI force. So here at the AH is a single line, like a linearly formed. So you are multiplying directly with the half of the distance. But here it is getting rectangular force. So that's nothing but half into the load into the distance of half. So nothing but half into XH, width of the heel slab, into P average. So as you can see there, at the IJ point, 13.56. So distance 
x h by third one by third times for the rectangle. So loading to the distance you are getting the moment here. So next one as you can see here maximum maximum bending moment in the heel slab m w is equal to. So this one is getting the maximum positive bending moment minus negative bending moment, and ultimate moment is nothing but one point five times of the maximum bending moment. And maximum shear force that you can see there, positive force minus negative force. The same way you will get the maximum ultimate shear force also. So now the formula for the shear stress, stress, the force divided by area, nothing but V U by B D. B means per meter you are taking, and D means effective depth. That we already know effective depth is 400, and V U is 83.086 into kilo newtons. So kilo newton is converting for newtons into 10 cube. So 0.20 newton per mm square. As per the table 19 IS 456. Please go through the code books that we can't provide in the video. Also, you have to go on cross check there only. So for M20 curve grid, tau C for 0.20, 100 ASG by BD. Nothing but percentage of the steel formula. That is equal to 0.15. So depending on that value, you will find the ASG in the previous step. Same like that. And you have to provide the main line force plan, 12 mm diameter, and the 150 mm cross section, depending on the total reinforcement of steel, and 80 mm diameter, nothing but distribution reinforcement in the transverse direction. Clear. So next step is the design of the toy slab. So when you take in the toy slab here completely, in this point, as you can see, in the what are the forces that is coming here? W one is not coming there. W two is not coming there. W three self it is coming over the self. So W three you have to take. Otherwise the P maximum force it is coming on downwards. And here at the J F E the force is coming there under the C F point also. So and you see the forces are there at the C F and J F E. One triangle and there is normal linear force. So depending on that one you will find the forces. Into distance from that point, in this equal to moment. So, direct of the self weight of the toe slab. Nothing but complete slab weight. So, by finding the same, these two forces, upward pressure is going upward negative, and this one is the self weight is coming the downwards past. So, you have to find out the maximum ultimate moment. So, m is equal to completely the moment into 1.5 times in the same way shear force. The normal process, nominal shear stress is equal to Bu by Bd. You will find the tau B, and as per the table 19 IS 456, depending on tau C value for Fc degree, you will find the percentage of the steel, and depending on this one, you will find the area of steel reinforcement, how much you are getting. Depending on this value only, you have to provide the adapt the any mm diameter, nominal diameter. So 2 mm diameter at 150 mm for. Main reinforcement and 8 mm diameter for the distribution reinforcement. Now the follow steps you design, design of the toy slab, heel slab, and the stem part. Now this one is the stability checking again as the over turning, sliding, and the either if it is failing getting anything, you have to provide the shear grip. So first one is stability again as the over turning. So over turning moment M not is equal to C A into gamma E H cube by six. So depending on this one, you will find the Or turning moment and stabilizing moment. M S is equal to sigma W. Nothing but this shear force where you are getting the stem point because when the slab is over turning towards the there, so this one it has to get from this point to it has to turn like this over turning. So completely you have to take the stem moment only weight complete weight how much you are getting. So this sigma W into B minus Z clear. So factor of safety is equal to 0.9 times of the stabilizing moment divided by over turning moment. If it is greater than 1.40, then it will be safe. If it is less than that one, you have to recheck the design again. So next one is stability against the sliding. So sliding force they already given. P A is equal to zero. Half is nothing but we already find it in the second step, I think so. So 0.5 into C A into gamma E H square. Nothing but you can write in this formula also. C A gamma E H square by two almost you have this form kind of formula. So then this all value is we already mentioned there. Next one is the resisting force F is equal to mu R nothing but mu into the complete weight. 
So mu is nothing but coefficient of the friction in the step one given to that they mentioned the 0.5 into the same complete shear force. So you will get this force. So for complete for factor of safety 0.9 times into resisting force divided by sliding force. If it is less than 1.4, it will be the unsafe. When you calculate it, there it is getting 1.12. So either we have to provide the shear key has to provide nothing but from this point we have to provide shear key on this bottom of the stem part. So next one, how to design the shear key? So first one that we already discussed. If active air pressure is coming, no problem. If passive air pressure is coming, means we have to provide some shear. Key. So that one you will consider here. PP intensity of the passive pressure. So for this one, depending on the Rankine theory, the formula is coefficient of the passive pressure into the P constant, nothing but P average force at the upward diagonal at the CF part because we are providing on the stem in this part. So one plus sine pi by one minus IP coefficient of the passive pressure into P average at the CF point. So depending on this one, you will find the intensity of the passive pressure only but intensity is not enough for that one you want the complete total passive force for this one pp into the small a nothing but this depth of the slab we have to assume that for the shear key also that when we are taking the same depth of the slab so 0 0.45 nothing but 450 mm you will get the total passive pressure so depending on this passive pressure factor of safety against sliding is equal to mu quotient of the friction into W plus PP this total passive pressure divided by the sliding force so sliding force is you already find out the right 1.03 here and this one mu W that you already find out there 101.68 nothing but resisting force plus and PP passive pressure so it is getting 2.45 so greater than 1.40 when you provide the 450 mm depth of the shear key so it is safe condition if it is not safe you have to change the depth of the shear key some more time so provide the minimum reinforcement because it is getting very less value here so that's why you have to provide 8 mm diameter at the 150 mm cross section to cross section so now clearly see this one 